Welcome to the Geeks Assembled podcast. Be afraid. Be very afraid. One. Hello, we are Geeks Assembled, and we've gathered here again today to talk about the New Year special of Doctor Who with Jodie Whittaker, Resolution. And this is, of course, well, I would say the reappearance of the Daleks, but we only have a single Dalek in this story, just the one. Uh, let's see what Susan and Alex made of this one. Right, I almost stopped the recording. Anyway, sorry. Um, let's let's see. It, it was uh, it was a story. There was a narration. There was a a little bit of uh, ancient history and some archaeology, which is always fun. I mean, I love the I love archaeologists. Um, met a few in in Israel, uh, but actually, I enjoy um, I enjoy the fiction ones too. Uh, I like Bernie Summerfield, and I like um, I like River Song in the Doctor Who universe. Um, so let's let's see. They start there, and then and then they, you know. Then they discover what it is, and it's crawling up a wall. And they've got this little bit of the ooze, and the doctor is, um, the doctor grabs some of it and analyzes it and is like, oh, no, it's the worst kind of DNA you'll ever see. And the uh, during that time, the Dalek, the Dalek squiggly guy has jumped on this this uh, woman's shoulder, this archaeologist, and is riding her and forcing her to do things, including drive so fast. Yeah, you might you might want to rephrase that bit. But he's not real. It's not really that fast. I mean, for Pete's sake, those I cars, didn't mean that bit. The, those cars these days they go more than like 150 miles an hour. I would say, oh my gosh, you know, we're going too fast. And the Daleks would say, go faster. And she would floor it. But apparently she was fighting it because she only went 100. And there's a cop. And the cop pulls her over. And, the, and that's it for those cops, for those two officers. That was the end of it. And she had uh, one of the... Dalek ray weapons. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I get to some place to build a build a Dalek uh, casing, the tank. Anyway, Sheffield Steel, a woman with a with a hammer again, building stuff out of Sheffield Steel. It's really cool, actually. It's been a lot of that this this series, and um. And I guess that that's like maybe like Chibnall was uh, sponsored by you know Sheffield Steel to actually like get people all these nerdy science fiction people thinking about um, Anorax, thinking about Sheffield Steel, putting it in their brains all the time because now it's in my brain and I don't even live in the UK. And I live in Boston, and that's just, uh, there's only a, a few steel places around here. But anyway, let's just keep going with this review, and uh, I'll just pass it on to Alex. I liked it. Oh, I forgot to say I liked it. Here's Alex. Um, yes, it was a good story. I liked the way they set it up. Um, it was interesting to see another different type of Dalek. I thought that it should have been quicker. Uh, I did enjoy some of the Whitaker uh, banter. Some of it I didn't. Um, I guess it was interesting at the end uh, with the way they finally got rid of the Dalek. I also thought it was sort of unnecessary to include his father in it. Uh, but they were trying to write modern now, so I knew that they were probably going to put in some family drama. Um, it was better 
Dalek story the most. You didn't have to go through the whole history. You didn't have to have Davros come back again for the 500th time. So that that part was good. No, I like him, but it was refreshing that they didn't go through the whole history again or bring him back again. Uh, so although I thought that the point of the new producer was that you weren't going to bring back all the villains, but I think they might start doing that again. But it wasn't a bad story. I bought it on Amazon. So. Second season. Um, okay, but the new season with Whitaker and Chipnell as the um, front runners, and they were also in Broadchurch. But that's a different show, even though it had a lot of people from the new Doctor Who in it. But that's a different show. That's more of a murder mystery, depressing show in a way. But then again, you know, that's the other nice, that's the way it should be on TV. Not all the TV shows should be the same or similar. So, um, yeah, I, I liked it. Let's go to, let's go to Beef Dad, shall we? Yes. I love the concept of this. I thought the execution was superb. Um, so the performance is were really, really good. I love Nicholas Briggs's Dalek. Nicholas Briggs is always good at Daleks. Um, easier. But I love the concept of the um, type of Dalek. And then, of course, when they, when the Dalek is basically recreated, because they actually found parts of the original Dalek to use. Um, I love the concept of it, um, and these little bubble bubble bits that disappear down and become there again. You, you've got rocket rockets coming out of those. So it was very very good. It was clever, and it wasn't like your ordinary standard Dalek. So it's not really a bringing back of the Daleks. This is a, this is showing you what a, an original, um, what do they call him? Um, the, the original sort of, explorer type Dalek is for. Oh yeah, Renacon. Yeah. Yeah. From Scaro, yeah. Yeah, and you know, that takes it right back to the very beginning. Um, the, one of the first ones to leave Scaro. Um, but differently equipped to the standard Daleks that we're so used to seeing. So that, that for me, was good. Um, and, well, I mean, the... the the three companions. I mean, everybody complains about there being three companions, but for goodness sake, it's not the first time in Doctor Who that there have been three companions. There have been three companions many, many times. In fact, the first Doctor started off with three companions. Yeah, for goodness sakes. It's, there's nothing wrong with three companions. It's a perfectly good idea. Um, uh, Ryan Sinclair, he's good especially when he saved his father at the very end. Um, and, you know, the fact that they had had problems and those problems got resolved and he saves his father. I love the idea of the Dalek being sucked out into a, in, into a supernova. That's, that's good. Um, Ma, uh, Yasmin Khan, does, she does just does a very solid performance as you know, you know um, she's she's reliable she is reliable and of course Mandip Gill it's her birthday today so happy birthday Mandip and Bradley Walsh he's very good he's very good He's a damn good actor. People think of him just as the quiz master on the chase, but they forget that he has done very many um, television series playing 
policeman and what have you. Um, he's a damn good actor and he's very good in this. And again, he's solid. And this for me was the absolute Jodie Whittaker gold plate. Um, she did a superb job. She really has, she's taken the doctor on, she's become the doctor. I, you know, I believe in her as the doctor. And uh, yeah, the, one of the most magical moments was where she faced down the Dalek. I loved it. I loved that. And, uh, you know, she did it in the way that any other doctor would have done it. it. And it was just totally believable for me. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the sets were good. And what I, when they, when the Dalek takes, or uh, he goes to GCHQ and takes over the, um, He's taking over the all the uh, power and everything um, so that he can contact the Dalek fleet. I mean, then, you know, and he smashes his way through the ceiling and into it. Uh, that, that was just so good. And of course, GCHQ tweeted the next day to say that they'd managed to sort, of pl sort the place out after the Dalek had... <laughs> that was brilliant. That, uh, that was brilliant they did that. I loved it. I loved it because you know the thing is, if GCHQ can get involved, feel involved enough in this to do a tweet on that, then it just goes to show what a good job was done with this ep with this episode. Yep. Let's go to Brian. What did you make of this story, Brian? All right, so Doctor Who Resolution. I thought that this story was absolute crap. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want to see everybody's reaction. No, but uh, uh, you, did, you didn't fool anyone. Um. <laughs> yeah, I could see from everybody's look that I didn't really fool anybody. But no, I, I love the story. Um, I think probably this is probably the best Doctor Who episode with Jodie Whittaker by far. Um, considering that it's her first Doctor Who special. And so I, I, with this being her first special and with an episode and everything, I think this is her best. Her best yet. The story was great. The what Dr. Ryan, um, Yaz, and uh, Graham were absolutely um, wonderful in it. I mean, it, uh, with the Ryan stuff between his father, I thought that was a good um, emotional um, story for the scene. I mean, well, not scene, but for the story. Um, and and also with that, when it comes to, like also with that with Graham, you get to see how how very how, how very well he cares for Ryan. That he that he mostly comes to he's much more of a father than his actual biological father was to him. So I really enjoyed that. Um, seeing the Dalek with this being a Dalek story they're much more terrifying than they have been in the past when it comes to classic or new who because I think probably this is probably how the dogs should should have been right? this is how the dogs should be and should have been from the very beginning. Oh, they should be this terrifying, 
Master Mayan ruthless alien creature who within a series like this. I mean, the whole puppeteering, the whole puppeteering thing was just absolutely, um, hell, it was, it was the darkest, the darkest of the dark I've ever seen with a Dalek. And I, that's what made it most terrifying. The puppeteering thing, like where he, he, a, a Dalek squid like creature that's in the Dalek case in half of the time, within all the time, pretty much with Doctor Who, took over and uh, took over a human being within on planet Earth. It was uh, seeing that happen on Doctor Who was generally terrifying. And honestly, I think that. Uh, I feel like that's where the way the dogs should be, and I think they should have done that from the stuff from 1963 from Hartnell Zella, that like the whole puppeteering thing. I'm 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 actually surprised that they don't. They, I'm surprised that they didn't do that back then. It would have would have made the much would have made the dogs much more terrifying and pretty much the maybe a better villain of the dog for the Daleks. So I think it would have, to me personally, I think it would have worked out better for the Daleks. The Daleks are a great villain, but I think it would have made them much more terrifying and a, one of the best, better, do, better um, villain within a Doctor Who story and yeah. series otherwise. Um, Seeing Wedeka with a Dalek within the story, you get you get to see the time lord the time lordness within Wedeka's Doctor because you know you never I mean sure she's finding herself to be a female because this is the first female Doctor and within the past. But within the season, she's been quirky, goofy, funny, and that nice type sort of doctor. I mean, she was still nice and a little bit goofy, but you actually got to see time on this within her because of the Dalek was there. So, I, seeing that, that's, that's what I was, that's mostly... I do love Whitaker's Doctor. I absolutely love her as the Doctor, but it's one. It's one of seeing that within the episode. One of the things I was waiting for to happen, maybe because they haven't showed any uh, monsters that have been like Krasik within the new Who in the past, like the Dark or Cybermen. Um, I mean, which was a good call, not having all the old monsters because it's a new series, new showrunner, and a new Doctor. So I think that was a good call. But seeing Jody's and Jody's Whitaker's Doctor interaction with a Dalek, it was just absolutely priceless and absolutely phenomenal. Because I—that's what I mostly. That's I was waiting for it. So. It was just the best. Um, I mean, there were like this. There was like a few callbacks within the, this story, which I'll probably get to a little bit later with um, favorite moments. But other than that, um, this is just probably the one, probably the best story within the season, and probably best way to start for a special for Wedeka. So I just love this story. But the only little nitpick I would have to say give this is the dark design for his casing. We'll, we'll get on to that in a minute. We'll get on to that. Yeah, um, but other than that, I, I just love the story. So going back to you, Howard. Yeah, and I'm just going to mention a one of my favorite moments first off, because otherwise I'll probably forget to mention it is when the policeman walks up to the car, when he stopped the, the archeologist who's been taken over by a Dalek. And he says, what's your name? And she replies, Dalek. And 
he asks, how do you spell that? Now, I think that's a reference to people putting an R in Dalek. Because people put Dar-lek, don't they? So, uh, you know, and it's, it doesn't have an R in it. It frustrates me. See people on Twitter putting an R in Dalek. It's just one of those things that, that niggles at me. It just really winds me up. <clears throat> but for the story itself, there's only been a handful of times that the Daleks have worked. Classic Who mostly got Daleks wrong. New Who has mostly got Daleks wrong. And, you know, I'm sorry to bring Moffat back into it, but Moffat never wrote a good Dalek story. Under his era, there wasn't one good Dalek story. Under Russell's era, there were, I would say, two good Dalek stories, which was Dalek and Partner of the Ways, which was fantastic. In Classic Who, Classic Who got Daleks wrong a lot of times. I mean, it just turned into the Davros show. You know, as soon as Davros came up, it was Davros every episode. It was Davros and the Daleks. Davros well, what, about and... the, uh, what about Victory of the Dalek with Matt Smith show in season five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah, don't like that. Well, that was a, you didn't feel like there was a good Stark story? Uh, no, no, no. Not a good story. No, not at all. But anyway, this, I've I got to give Chibnall real credit here because by this episode, he completely understands what a Dalek is. He completely understands what a Dalek does. Kills. And this Dalek killed. Moffat never understood that. Some other showrunners never understood that. A Dalek is there to kill. Okay. Well, again, you know, unfortunately, Alan, this is where you get into the classic monsters debate. I mean, a lot of people I know like the Cybermen, and they're not shown as much as the Daleks are. Uh, plus, well, remember, too, that, now. right, plus, remember, too, that in classic Who, you had, you know, six to eight to 16 stories, you know, so that, that sort of got a little long-winded, you know, so. So just just hold on a second. I disagree with all y'all about the. I think that the that Hartnell's Dalek stories were freaking scary. No, no, I didn't and say that. freaking awesome. So anyway, there. Tron had some good stories. Too. But that's 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 where we're and leaving it. So did Tom Baker as well. That's they were. All right. I think I think I think William when the Daleks were originally showing with William Hartnell, I think they were scary then. I think they started to lose their way when Davros came into it because it just came the Davros show every time. Uh, but this is a lone Dalek. And, and I like how creative Chibnall has been. He's like, I, he's like I'm going to do this story in reverse. This is going to be a, a Renekon Dalek and it's going to be, and it's going to be stripped. It's going to be out of its casing. And honestly, it looks amazing. The, the squid of it, when it was on that wall, it looked huge. And it looked really, really revolting. I mean, if you saw that thing on a wall, you, you would gasp. You know, it looked really creepy. And then when it, when it took her over, it, it, there, was, there was a fear in me at one point of the episode when they revealed the Dalek had take o taken over the woman. I thought... The eye stalk was going to come out of her head. I thought, oh, we're not doing that rubbish again. You know, because I never liked it when the Dalek eye stalk came out of people's foreheads. That looked awful. But this was brilliant how it was latched onto her back and she was trying to fight it. Uh, the actress did just a phenomenal job, really top marks. The acting in this from everyone was, was on real form. Jodie Whittaker and the Dalek scene with Jodie Whittaker was just, for, well, there was a few scenes when she saw the, up against it with the hologram, and then when she saw it built. And I actually do like the Dalek. You've got to remember, this is a one-off Dalek. It built itself out of scrap. This Dalek is that capable that even out of its, even out of its real, um, no. you know, tank, it built itself. It built itself in there. 
and one thing I one thing I do hope that uh, is is moved into the actual new Dalek Dalek design is where like the center flashes, you know, or the head. Like it wasn't just the eyes here; it was the you know the the actual head itself lit up. I actually really like that down the middle. There was a stripe down the middle where it lit up as well. I think they should keep that. Yeah, um, yeah I just I I can't praise this episode enough. I know people have said. Well, the the Ryan and the dad scenes were a bit, they slowed the episode down. Yeah, but that's because that was important to the climax of the story. Because if, if Ryan's father just popped in at the end and got an, into the top, it wouldn't have worked. You needed to build it up. You needed those scenes specifically to have that ending. And actually, I thought, oh, my God, is Chibnall going to kill them both off? I, I generally, for once didn't know what was going to happen in a Dalek story. I, I love the bit where we think the Daleks defeated in uh, uh, GHQ, um, and then it turns out it's alive, and then, and, then it, and then it goes, Doctor, you are my prisoner. And then, like, from, from then onwards, I'm like, oh, my God, is the Doctor really going to take the Dalek to the homeworld, to Scaro? I thought... All bets are off now what's going to happen. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it had suspense. It had surprise. It had fear. You know, it was brilliant. It was absolutely phenomenal. So I'm going to go back to you lot for favorite moments. <laughs> let's go to Beef Dad. Yeah, well, as I've said already, um, the face down between the Doctor and the Dalek, um, when you first see the Dalek um, that, is, that he's put himself together, um, that is, I love that scene. Um, the final scene with where they've, she's opened the TARDIS and set a channel through which the Dalek can be sucked and into the supernova. And then, of course, that doesn't go quite right, but then that, that is um, sorted out by Ryan. That was excellent. That was sort of real tension um, and very well done. Um, yeah, I must confess I did, when I first saw it on the wall, I thought to myself, that's a Dalek. I recognised it. Um, you know, going back, I'd seen, I'd seen enough of Daleks before to be able to recognise it. Um, but the thing is, it's very unusual for them to start off a thing with a Dalek without its casing. And of course, a different casing because it is a different Dalek to the ones that we've seen so many times on Doctor Who. But they brought in a bit of originality. And for me, that really, really made it. And as I say, Jodie Whittaker's performance in this, loved it. Brilliant performance. She's really, she's really taken on the role of the Doctor now. You can see it in her face. You can see it in the way she moves. And yeah, so that's, that's me. Let's go to Susan and Alex for favourite moments. Well, uh, let me start if that's all right. That's fine. Cool. Um, I I thought that the, the the bits where Ryan and his father were facing off and Graham came behind Ryan and really supported him and was really fatherly towards him were really sweet. And really, really rich. And I liked the 
I like the bit where, um, well, I, I, you know, I like the whole story arc. I love things that start with archaeology, go into family, and then come out the other side in science fiction. I like that so much. I mean, that is, to me, one of the, the best story arcs in, in I mean, all, all told. I, I love the way it, it, it brings the past and the present, the past being the archaeology, the present being the family, and the science fiction being the future. It really does make a story uh, a rich tapestry at that point. And, you know, the Dalek controlling the, the archaeologist and Brian's father were, hmm, oh my gosh, so intense and so scary. I, I agree. But I, I, I would like to say that, that the, that the jeopardy was real in Troughton and Hartnell's time. And there was only one really, I mean, because of the Ogron edition during the Perui times, I don't think that they, I don't think that the Daleks were, were necessarily as terrifying they wanted the Ogrons to be terrifying, so whatever. Well, I, I think they struggled with them going to color. Okay, well. right, 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 yeah. right, right. But the, the Ogrons, you know, to me, diminished the, the scariness of the Daleks. And then, of course, you know, the whole addition of the Genesis story and Davros w was interesting. But I always thought, like how did, how you know in the in the Hardnell story there is like um there is a mention of these creatures coming from bodies such as ours i just I, you know to me that was so intense because i mean how much mutation would a, a human being have to go through to to end up as a squiggly little octopus guy or whatever, squid guy. And I, oh, this one was, you know, see, I know you're, I know exactly how you're made. He, he said, he, I mean, he makes the girl aware. He makes the archaeologist aware. I know exactly how you're made. I know how to make you move. And all, and then of course with Ryan's father the same. Anyway, th that's my bits. Here, here's Alex. Okay. Um. Yeah. I I actually don't want to concentrate on that. Um. Again, it's a little bit of a catch twenty two. The Daleks actually are is a very good story. Most of the Dalek stories are good. The issue comes between how they're designed how expensive they are to make, how expensive it is to have a villain, and then the fact that you have the added dichotomy of if you show them too much, then they're not scary anymore. But they, they are a villain. So with Hartnell and Troughton and Tom Baker and even Peter Davidson and even Colin Baker and even Sylvester McCoy, they are scary. It's just the problem of the sets, the effects can't be too expensive because they have a lot of stories. It's not like now where it's, you're lucky if you get 11. And then the fact that Star Wars came in and it revolutionized all the aliens. So unfortunately, even though Doctor Who has wonderful ideas for aliens, they can't compete with Star Wars. And then you also have the Cybermen, which I thought were actually a scarier villain in many ways because they were closer to human beings than the Daleks were. But remember, if you're a little kid, the Daleks look kind of scary because you don't know if it's a, a machine, you don't know if it's real, then they can be fast. Of course, the problem was you didn't find out until Sylvester McCoy that they could actually go upstairs. So <laughs> uh, you have, yeah, you have the, yeah, so you have the issue of 
not only that they're sort of not, and the other issue with the classic Doctor Who is the fact that not only do they have a limited budget and limited means, but a lot of the villains are sort of fa fascist or Nazi-like, and that's sort of, that's good at first, but then when you start seeing 10 stories, 20 stories, 30 stories, and it's very similar, it sort of wears on you a little bit. Here, they kept it sort of minimal. You didn't know everything about the Dalek. There's no Davros. There's no hordes of millions. The Doctor admits to knowing the Daleks, but doesn't go into the whole history. Sure. Uh, so that's good. They're going to have to come up with another way to evolve it, though, but make more sense than they did with the Cybermen, because with Matt Smith's time, the Cybermen became too advanced. And they're also going to have to come up with new villains because we can't keep going over the same thing. Uh, this is starting to turn into a Twilight Zone, you know, issue if they're constantly doing the same themes all the time. But as I said, it wasn't, it, yeah, yeah, to, well, yeah, but that's only one real villain out of the whole new season. Um, they need to come up with newer villains. They need to see if they can come up with an offshoot of the Cybermen and the Daleks, but still scary. This Dalek was scary, obviously, because it inhabited the body of the woman. And even though she was fighting it, she couldn't defeat it until the end. I did like what the doctor said. The doctor had a lot of good lines. Again, uh, the companions probably could have been broken off a little bit. And I didn't really like with Ryan and his dad. Um, but again, I think they were also trying to, yeah, I think they were also trying to not have it totally like the classic Doctor Who with the villains and the and the solution or the plot of the villains was the overarching. And remember, too, this isn't the old days where you have three and a half hours to devote to the story. And I actually think this might have benefited from a two-parter. Um, but again, they don't want to do that, and it doesn't hold well on the Internet if everything is in two or three or four parts. It has to be quick. Yep, let's go to Brian. Favorite moments, Brian, if you remember. Yes. What's your favorite moments? Resolution. Of the, no, resolution. What's the episode again? The Crotons. Catch up. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. I wanted to see your reaction, Alan. Um, <laughs> Um, favorite moments would probably have to be, um, uh, I would probably have to say my first, my first favorite moment would probably have to be the, um, the, um, first, uh, introduction of, um, Whitaker's doctor between the Dalek and the story. Yeah. Like, um where the dog goes up to her for the first time and um, the dog asked, who is she? And it scans her and uh, she finally goes up to the dog and says, I'm the doctor. And he backs away, yeah. And yeah, he backs away and starts firing all over the place. You are the doctor, any enemy of the Daleks. So I thought that was probably my uh, best... Uh... I don't think Nicholas Briggs has got anything to worry about there. <laughs> <laughs> I, think uh, I think he's probably... safe in his job. <laughs> I think that's like, probably the one of the best... Um, my my top and best favorite scene within the uh, story of the episode. Um, second probably favorite moment would probably have to be... Um, the little uh, tid and tidbit joke, the phone call to unit. Ah, uh, yeah. I was wondering when someone was going to mention that. It's called. A, it's caused a real upset, hasn't it? He, yeah. They said suspended, not not that they've completely gone or anything. No, like but that. they did. They did unfunded, and that's rubbish. Yeah, but I would as well. Yes, uh, I bet. Uh, Kate was useless. I bet Susan wasn't really happy about that, wasn't she, oh, Alan? Me. 
Well, <laughs> I mean, again, you know, this is this is the issue as well. That you know, the more actors, the more they have to pay. No more. No, no, no. no, 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 no but the thing is, the thing is, th this is what you got to remember. I can understand why Chibnall didn't put Unit in it because if you think about it, we had a lot of characters and a lot, lot going on, and if he put Unit in it, it would have just added a whole load of other characters. And then, and then I think that would have confused new viewers, and it would have muddled the story, because because we had we had the compact we had the the four Tardis team, we had Ryan's dad, we had the two archaeologists, we had several characters in this. If you put Unit in there as well, I think it totally would have been a bit. It would have gone totally off. Well, range. again, I mean, the third Doctor, the fourth Doctor, and the eleventh Doctor, and the little bit of the tenth used Unit as well. So, I mean, that's the other. Yeah, issue. but they were in seven. They were in six, seven parts. Okay, but but it, no, not not all of them. The new versions weren't in in six parts. The the other issue too is that I know some people that didn't like Unit, and Unit only really worked with the third and the fourth Doctor. That's not true. Okay, but yeah, I don't like the there new was unit. less people. Yeah, but there was but less people. So. I know you don't. But Moffat I... run Unit into the ground. But you guys are wrong that's, again. That's why they got. Oh, no, you guys that's... are oh, wrong that is, again. That is right. It only had Unit for the third. Yeah. Well, it, you know, that, that's why we need a new production team, and, and everybody will come in, you know, once in a while. But, but uh, you guys are wrong about UNIT, and I just want you to know that Kate is cool. She was introduced in, in like, some, the... Oh, what you can't called? even remember what you were introduced. It's called Downtime, and she was introduced there. And you know she's a she's a great character. She's carried through from fan fiction into into real, and, and she's got. I mean, she, wow, she, they were in the fiftieth anniversary special, so right. So but people I mean, say people say it was people say it was a joke against um, Brexit. Actually, I don't agree. I think it was actually more a joke against Trump because yeah, or, of Trump or wanting. Yeah, or Moffat. Well, well, because of Trump not being a fan of NATO and wanting to uh, cause trouble with yeah. NATO, I think that was more of a of a dig at Trump more than actual Brexit. Uh, that's all right. But <laughs> well, well, the, the point is, it's a new series, and you can't keep having the same characters five hundred times. But the austerity measure is just an austerity measure. Uh, okay, but I wasn't a huge fan but, of Unit anyway. I know but. you weren't, but you're. <laughs> Oh, well, too bad. Like I said, it's time for a new production team. Production I, I team. Four, okay, I'm going to shut it off. Alex, Alex, what did you make of the Brigadier? What, the, the new one? The, the African no, no, the, one? Or, no, no, okay. no, no, Nicholas Courtney. Nicholas Courtney. Yeah, Nicholas Courtney. I mean, I actually liked him, but I'm glad he wasn't around all the time. But I did like him. In, I did I did like him in Madrid Undead. I did like him with, with Pertwee. I mean, they really played off each other well. They did. They did, I'll yeah. They did. I'll tell you. Nicholas brilliant. Courtney. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, okay, Nicholas Corny wasn't good in the Three Doctors story, though. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> in all the other stories, he was good, but the Three Doctors, I didn't really particularly enjoy him in. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, you just you, you just could be wrong about this too. Well, remember too, Hartnell, Hartnell was in. But anyway, anyway. my mic off and Alex is talking. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And Hartnell was very sick as well. So I mean, you have to remember that. Like I said before, that, you know, they really tried to string a budget together, and and it was amazing half of the stuff that they did. Right. And the brigadier was brilliant all no, the time. Wasn't. He's a grumpy old man in that one. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're really trying to upset Susan, aren't you? I don't know. Um, Wait, what but, were we, Brian? Did you give us your favorite moments? I can't even remember I, what they were. I only gave two. I was going to give uh, one more. Well, what's, what's your third one? Um, my... <laughs> Third and final favorite moment um, would probably be, ha be at the um, towards the end from where the uh, the dark was in the like the government building and yeah uh, yeah 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 and then the Tardis arrives and 
the um, the crew and the doctor comes out of the TARDIS and everything, and the doc fires the uh, the gun, and it hits the shields of the TARDIS. And that yeah, that's mo- happened before, if you remember. That, 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 that moment I loved. Partner in other ways. It, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, Partner in other ways. Yeah, it, very, it, very it similar. Me so yeah. much of the Ninth Doctor within Partner in other ways and everything. And I absolutely love they brought back a little, I guess, nod or, and call back, you would, I guess you would say, to that <laughs> moment. You see, some, um, see, Brian, something tells me Chibnall was a big fan of the Russell T. Davis era because you had that scene which mimicked Partner in Other Ways, but you look at the final scene where the doors are flung open and they're all they're all um, hanging on to dear life is much like Doomsday with Rose Tyler and the Rift. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. You know, very, another, very similar, well, you know, when they had shots of them holding on like that and the, yeah. Another thing very I liked similar. about this episode was well, you know how I said earlier oh, with the uh, interactive first interaction with the Dalek and the Doctor when they first meet? Yes. Yeah. I've been noticing them. Um, I've, been, I've been noticing, like, from when the series first started and all the way up until this point within this New Year special, they had, the Dalek had no problem or had recognition that the Doctor's a female now. I mean, sure, he, the dog noticed, but they don't make it a big issue or bring it up constantly, constantly that Moffat would probably make. Because in twice upon oh, a Moffat time... Oh, Moffat would have had him kissing. Moffat, honestly, Moffat would have had him kissing. Because yeah. as you know, within like twice upon a time, they brought up a, a hell of a lot of issues with... David Bradley's first doctor. Yeah, that that was wrong. They they really they were very disingenuous to William Hartnell's legacy as a doctor. He, he was not a sexist at all. His doctor was not. I mean, he may no have been in, he may have been one in real life, but he never bought. He that may one. yeah he, he may have been. You know, there's 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 accounts of William Hartnell being racist, but but the char- he was playing a character of the doctor, and the doctor was. His doctor was definitely not sexist. Yeah, he never brought that to the role at all. Yeah, you, you shouldn't bring, you know... With Barbara being a yeah. BAMF, you know, that's... that's It doesn't make sense, you're right. Yeah, no, that, that Moffat shouldn't have done that. He wanted to make a, a point, and uh, he shouldn't have done that. He I should... Mean, he I- should yeah. Again, again, according to at least this is what I heard, like in an interview, uh, Moffat said himself that if you go, he said if you go back and look in within Hot Nose, uh, he was very sexist and made very sexist things. No, he didn't. No, 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 not at all. No, no, absolutely wrong. I know. There's, o- there's only one time. There's only one time. And that's the and that's the five doctors, and because Hartnell told uh, was it Herndall, Susan and Tegan. It, it, yeah, was, Herndall. Know, um, it was it was yeah, Herndall. Herndall. Yeah, Herndall said to uh, said to go and make the tea to the um, okay, but Susan, Tegan. But that it? was that was to show growth between his. Oh, I, I understand that first and fifth that's... incarnation. But the, that's me, the only time I can. That's the only time on okay. screen or whatever I can think of, and that even wasn't like you say. That wasn't even William Hartnell anyway. Okay, but the the important thing was about uh, about Hartnell was that that uh, when he faced off with the Dalek, you know, uh, he was he was he was protective of Susan, but Susan <laughs> stood in front of him. So I mean, he was kind of protective, but he—I mean, he was—he was—he knew the 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 women were gonna were gonna save the day, especially with like Susan and Barbara, and to start off that way, you know, the the thing was is that here was Jody's doctor, like faced with a Dalek that was uh, putting 
a person between herself and um, itself and her. So, I mean, the actual power situation had, had flip-flopped. And I, I always love a good eye stalk shot. You know, when we see through the Daleks eye stalk, I, I always love it when that happens right. because that's us seeing through the Dalek to the Doctor as the Dalek. We're looking through the Dalek's eye as the Doctor. Yeah, I always really like that. And I, I really like the beginning as well. The narration was brilliant when they're in Russia and they're in the Caribbean or wherever it was. Uh, that was great at the beginning. And I, I, I like um, archaeology as well as Susan. You know, I love all that stuff when they're digging up bones and stuff like that. For me, that's proper Doctor Who, really. Okay. Uh, seeing all that. <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, Hartnell did have, unfortunately, health issues. Yeah, we were. We and, he, and he was getting, right, but he was getting onto that. And also, uh, you know, without him, you wouldn't have had any of the, right. any, okay, any of the, Foundation of the Doctor, the Foundation of Susan, which of course you also love Susan. I know. And uh, also <laughs> the school teachers. You don't have to remind us. And, and the TARDIS. No, but if anybody isn't watching, plus remember, it's not exactly equal because number one, it was black and white. Number two, it was many, many episodes. And also number three, they had more historical than any other Doctor Who. So, you, you know, it's not really fair to compare. A character from 50 years ago it's probably going to be different anyway and he was not a sexist anyway can I, can I can i just add two things about this episode though one there was no person inside this dalek it was 100 percent remote controlled completely and you know the dalek casing i mean now i mean there was no one in the dalek casing and Secondly, you know the sewers, the underground where they, 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 they find the Dalek and that? That's a set. And that, that I think, that is that the biggest, they said that's the biggest set Doctor Who's used, that Doctor Who's had? That was an actual set. So they, they built that. Right. So I thought um, that was impressive. Do you know what? I really thought it was real sewer, and they really found it. I hadn't... And, but I don't know, I can't remember what I watched, and it just said it was a set, and I, can't, I was like, with, uh, what? With this, new, uh, sh with this new season, with Shimno being in charge, I absolutely love that they're not bringing up the whole gender swap thing throughout the course of the season. And yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, it's over with me. It doesn't matter, it's, matter. Yeah. it's not a big deal or anything like that. Because with Moffat in charge, he made it such a big deal and made huge errors and everything. And with Chim, no, he doesn't. And absolutely support and love that. Yeah. Well, let's go to let's go to scores. Brian, what would you give this out of ten? Uh, final same score to this special and episode for this season is um, probably a ten out of ten. Yep, uh, beef dad. I loved this one. I thought the performances were brilliant. I loved the concept. I loved the execution and the effects. It was all just absolutely perfect. Ten. Let's go to Alex and Susan. I have to say, yeah, the effects were brilliant. Yeah. And the music. Yeah. Um, I, I, I hope that they do end up funding a unit <laughs> uh, I, that was going to be my point five down from ten, but I think no, I'll, I, no, I think I, I, just, no, just let me finish, Alan. Um, I think I'm going to give it a ten because, uh, you know, I'm going to give it ten Probosi, uh little squigglies and ten archaeological digs out of ten. Uh, tell okay, us what you, tell because... us what you find, Susan, in those digs. <laughs> the um because of the the father subplot um if they had left that out i, I would have actually enjoyed this more i'm going to give it a nine and i'd give it more uh except for that but i do like the concept i do like the execution but i thought the father part could have been left out and i also thought that the execution was good and again no you know no going over the whole history no going no going over davros 
So that, you. you know, that's pretty good that they're able to bring back a villain without having it, you know, get bogged down in all the, you know, 55 years of history. I'll sum it up by this. The Daleks are back. And they are finally scary again. And that alone, apart from everything else, that alone is a 10. An absolute clear 10. Best Dalek story since series one back in 2005. That's what I believe. Best Dalek story since Partner in Other Ways. They're, they're back. Uh, and, and long may they reign. I hope they're in series 12 um, with a bigger Dalek story. But yeah, 10 out of 10. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for joining me. I'd like to thank you for watching. Tell us below what you made of this Dalek story and any other. Look after yourself. Take care. We will see you next time.